This video is made possible by Gerald Subaru. You know Subaru makes fantastic cars, and Gerald Subaru in Naperville matches those vehicles with fantastic service as well. Visit GeraldSubaruNaperville.com to start your new car search today. All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach, and today I am driving a 2021 Subaru Legacy Touring. Up front is a 2.4 liter turbocharged flat four, and down below is a CVT. Now I'm super excited to be driving this here Subaru Legacy Touring for two main reasons. First of all, it's rainy out today, it's stormy, and there's nothing else I want to be in when it's inclement weather than a Subaru. But the second reason is the fact that this is the Touring model. This is the top tier for the Subaru Legacy, which carries a $40,000 price tag, but this is bordering on luxury car. Gone are the days of deleted gauges in the gauge cluster, like the 90s Subaru Legacy. You used to not even have a tachometer, they just put Subaru there. Or like the WRX that had an optional radio. Now, the trim levels get pretty intense and pretty pricey, but they're full of a lot of great features, so we'll talk about those today. So let's get back to that 2.4 liter turbo charge flat four. Subaru has done what Mazda did and a lot of other manufacturers did where they developed this engine actually for their large SUV. This was a Subaru Ascent engine. I drove it way back in 2019 when that engine debuted and now they've trickled it down to the rest of their lineup. The Legacy gets it, the Outback gets it, and of course the Ascent always had it. I really, really like it. It's a solid, reliable engine. It makes good power and offers a good punch. We are out here on the test track, fully warmed up. Here we go. There it is. <laughs> now, two things I wanna note there. First of all, you heard it not really shift and that's because of the CVT. We'll talk about that in a second. But the second thing is the fact that it is raining out, as you can see, and there was not a single second or even chance for this car to have wheel spin or slippage. That's what I love about Subarus. They're very good in bad weather. But like I mentioned, let's talk about that CVT. That means continuously variable transmission, meaning there aren't any set gears in the transmission. Now, typically as a car enthusiast, I'm not a big fan of CVTs. I think they feel rather unnatural to me. I'm used to having a tried and true gear change, you know, wah, wah, wah. However, I fully understand the fact that someone who buys this car probably doesn't care about this. That. And so driving it normally, it doesn't feel weird. It doesn't feel odd. It feels completely normal, which is all I really worry about. Last but not least, this has the symmetrical Subaru all-wheel drive, meaning it's very good in the rain, it's very good in the snow, it's very good in the dirt, and any other surface you wanna throw at it. Subarus are good at driving over different surfaces, and this is no exception. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the interior. We have quite a bit to go through in here. Well, in front of me, I have two physical gauges. On the left is my tachometer and coolant temperature, and on the right is my speedometer and fuel, as well as I get a little screen in the center that I can customize to tell me a couple different things, especially like my trip odometers, odometers, things like that. Now, this car does have the vision system that the Subaru Forester had, which was absolutely annoying. Let's see if it'll trigger here. Yep, there it is, because I was looking away from gauges. However, this is a lot less touchy and a lot less annoying than it was in the Subaru Forester, and of course, the service can be turned off. On the steering wheel, on the left, I have my volume, skip track, source, and phone options, as well as my information options at the bottom left. And then on the right, I have my adaptive cruise control options. This does have adaptive cruise, which is a very, very nice feature. And to round out the steering wheel, I do have a heated steering wheel button at the bottom right, and then I do have paddle shifters on the back. Now, this is very stupid. Why a CVT has paddle shifters, I do not know, but it has them. It's been a couple weeks since I filmed this video, and I now have a better perspective on why the Subaru has a CVT, but still has paddle shifters. I filmed these videos in Illinois. Illinois is very, very flat, and the only reason you'd really use paddle shifters is to pretend that you're Dominic Toretto while going to Meyer. However, in mountainous areas like Colorado that I just came back from, gear ratios are very, very important when going down mountains and hills. 
Instead of completely blowing out your brakes, you shift into a lower gear to allow the engine to engine brake, saving your brakes from overheating, warping, etc. So in a very adventurous vehicle like Subaru, paddle shifters actually make a lot of sense for when you are going downhill, engine braking, things like that in mountainous areas. We just don't use them here in Illinois, which is why I've always sort of made fun of CVT cars for having paddle shifters in the past, but now I have a better perspective. To the left of me, I have my trunk release and gauge dimmer switch, as well as a vent, but to the right of the gauge dimmer switch, I have two dead switches. This is really annoying because this is a very high trim level for the Subaru Legacy. I should get all of the features. Why do I have dead switches here? I'm not quite sure. And it is infuriating because it feels like I'm left out even though I paid $40,000 for this car. And on the door, I have two different memory seat options, power mirrors and power windows. Now, this is where we really start to notice the brown leather stitched in here which looks fantastic, feels fantastic, and makes the car feel very, very premium. I like that a lot. And as we'll talk about, this car feels really nice. Now moving into the center, we have a giant screen to talk about. One thing I really dislike about these vertical screens is the fact that they are very hard to capture in a horizontal video. However, I'm gonna try my best. First of all, right off the bat, one thing I dislike is the climate controls are only controlled on the screen. So, as you can see down here, I have my heated seat button, right? I should be able to just hit that and turn the heated seat on and off. But when I hit it, it opens up a whole menu, and now I have to hit a secondary button. A minimal complaint for sure, but while you're driving, the fewer times I have to touch the screen, the better. So now, instead of just hitting one button, or say like a button down here or something, I have to go boom, wait for it to open and then boom again and adjust it that way where a physical button would have been a lot better. However, I do have heated and ventilated seats and a nice thing is that I can kind of click and drag here with the temperature, which is very, very nice. And I do have dual zone and things like that. Let's talk about the actual radio here. I have a bunch of different apps for map, radio, media, phone apps, car info, Subaru Starlink, Apple CarPlay, my Subaru settings and add shortcuts. So let's go through a couple of these here. Let's take a look at the map. I do really like this. This is very high resolution. It's not super responsive, but it's responsive enough and I can zoom in and out, things like that. But of course, if you have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you're not really going to look at this. Radio media, phone and apps, pretty standard here. I could take a look at my apps, things like that. Car info, so this is cool. This will actually give me the pitch of the vehicle, things like that, advanced package. So these are all the sensors and monitors going on and I can touch one, it'll tell me what it does, which is really, really nice. And I like the fact that it shows it where it is on the car and I can hit info, which is really, really cool. And then I can go over here to maintenance, engine oil, oil filter, tires, maintenance schedule, things like that. And I can adjust those settings, but of course I'm not going to. One thing I do like down here is that I do have my automatic start stop on and off button, my users button, you could set different users, as well as I can just hit the car button and this will bring me to a menu showing me the vehicle dynamics control, cruise control characteristics, auto holding, so auto holding brake, which is great, steering responsive headlights and auto start stop. You can also go to driver assistance, change those settings, others. I like the fact that it's at the touch of a button and even when I go home and such, that button never changes. Here is the Apple CarPlay menu. We'll actually take it out to the menu here. It is a more vertical system than a horizontal system like I would find in my Mazda. So if you're coming from a horizontal system, this will take about 36 seconds in order for you to adjust and then you're fine and you'll never think about it ever again. Now let's touch on the backup camera just here for a second. I do have the adjusting lines which adjust very smooth minimal, you can see in the corner on the left, very small changes in the steering wheel, 
are resulting in changes on the screen, which I love. And I can turn my parking sensors on and off, which is great. So just to recover what I like and dislike about the screen, I love the refresh rate. I like how clear it is and I like how modern it feels. What I don't like is the fact that all of the climate controls are ran through the screen. So if anything ever happens to the screen, I'm pretty much screwed besides temperature here and my defrosters and mirrors, but that's really it. I don't like the fact that I have to go and hit two different buttons and go to two different menus in order just to turn my heated seat on. I think that's a little excessive. Down below that screen, I do have two USB chargers as well as an aux in, my power parking brake, and then the shifter itself. The shifter feels nice and it looks nice too. I feel as though this shifter was made for this car, which I'm sure it's just a Subaru parts bin part, but it looks nice, looks very presentable, and I really like it. Off to the right of that, I have a view button. So when I hit that, I can actually cut to a front view of the Subaru Legacy. I don't know of many sedans that have this feature of a front facing camera. This is common on a lot of SUVs now because SUVs are so large and in order for the average person to drive one, they need a little bit of help. But on a sedan, it's very peculiar to find. It's not a super high quality camera, but you still get one, which is very nice. One more thing I do wanna add about the audio system is the fact that the Touring gets the Harman Kardon speaker system, which I really, really like. Harman Kardon also does BMW, so you know that they're good. Down below the shifter, we do have cup holders, so we will do a big freaking bottle test here in the Subaru Legacy Touring, and you know what? I'm going to give it a pass. I've been driving around for quite some time with the bottle in here, it's shifted around a little bit, but it fits decently enough. So the Subaru Legacy passes the big friggin' bottle test. Before we get on with the rest of the review, I wanna give a huge thank you to Fixed. Fixed is a Bluetooth OBD2 sensor for your car. You can plug it into any OBD2 vehicle, which is a vehicle manufactured after 1996, and you can take a look at your gauges, you can keep an eye on your temperature, you can see your speed, you can time your zero to 60. There's tons of really cool features that will pair directly to your smartphone, and it gives you great insight on your vehicles. Fixed is giving my viewers a hefty discount, so click the link in the description below, get your own fixed OBD2 Bluetooth sensor, and start learning more about your car. Then in the center console, I have a two-way openable center console. The bottom has a 12-volt outlet as well as a CD player. And the top just has a little bit of extra storage. One thing about this car is that this car's seatbelt chime has like a second gear. Like it gets louder when you don't buckle up. It starts yelling at you. So listen, you'll be able to hear the change. Now we gotta talk about the seats. Like I said, the seats are heated, they are ventilated, as well as power and memory, and they're finished in this brown leather that matches the dashboard. I really like the look of it. I think brown interiors are actually starting to make a comeback, and I think it looks very classy. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats, so let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2021 Subaru Legacy Touring, and I am thoroughly, thoroughly impressed. First of all, my knees are not hitting the front seat, my head is not hitting the ceiling, and I'm 5'11". Very, very comfortable back seat. This is also my driving position. So if you have someone who is shorter sitting or driving the vehicle, you're gonna have even more leg room, which is just insane. Down here on the center console, I do have two 2.1 amp USB chargers, as well as two different levels of heated seats. Back here, I get my own dedicated button, physical button for the heated seats, where the front does not. Also, um, it's like now sunny outside. Um, I'm filming this all on the same day. This is just Illinois weather for you. It's sunny and nice now. Anyway, I do have a fold out center console here with two cup holders and I get this little placard back here for the Napa leather. So this is true Napa leather. It says premium quality Napa leather. And it says here, it takes meticulous craftsmanship and over 30 days to produce the genuine full grain Napa leather trim on this seat. Subaru uses the highest standards to ensure lasting quality and comfort. So wherever you go, you can feel like home. Love takes time, 
so does quality. I always love reading like copyright for advertising things. Anyway, back seat gets three thumbs up if it were possible. Very, very comfortable, very spacious, very, very good. Let's go take a quick look at the trunk now and then we will talk about the looks. So we're on the back of the Subaru Legacy Touring XT. So we do get touring floor mats. Obviously, normally these will be in the car when the vehicle is purchased, but it's not as tall as I thought. However, it is pretty deep, which is nice. This is a pretty standard trunk that you'll find in most sedans these days. A lot of load floor, but not a whole lot of height, which is fine. And then I do have buttons here to lower the second row of seats, which is fantastic. So you see the seats up there that can actually lay flat so you can fit larger items in which is really, really nice. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and this is arguably my least favorite part of the Legacy. I don't think the car is ugly. I think it's actually quite the handsome car. My issue with it is the wheels. I don't think the wheels look premium enough. The fact that they are black and silver just makes it look like they're just, you know, average run-of-the-mill wheels. They're nothing really too special, which is a shame. Again, for the $40,000 price tag, I wish I got nicer wheels. However, with all of that being said, let's get to my final thoughts on this here Subaru Legacy. Well, I have reviewed over 560 cars. This is actually review number 561, which is arguably a lot of cars. And of those cars, I've driven a lot of Subarus. A lot of Subarus from the 90s, a lot of Subarus from the 2000s, a lot of Subarus from the 2010s, and even a Subaru from the 70s. Shout out to Michael's Subaru DL. And basically, from all of those vehicles that I've driven, my consensus is that Subarus are great off-road, they're great at what they do, some of them are very fast, some of them drive really well, but they've never been luxurious cars. I've never gotten into a Subaru and thought, oh wow, this is nice. Especially the early 2000s WRXs. I mean, those were economy cars with good motors. That's really it. But now stepping into this car, my tune has changed. This is a luxurious car. This is a very nice car. This is a world different than Subarus of yesteryear. I feel like with older Subarus, like the old Foresters, I love the old Foresters, by the way. I wanted to buy one for years and honestly i still hope to own one eventually one day but i feel like with those you kind of had to bargain with whoever you're picking up you had to let them know that they're good off-road because what's laid out in front of you wasn't that nice it's like showing your parents your new iphone and they say oh it looks the same as the last one and you have to say well they they upgraded the camera look at this camera let me let me take a picture of your dog look at how look at how crisp that is oh look at how fast it connects to the internet and and stuff like that. you kind of have to bargain for it you know this you don't have to do any bargaining when you get in this car it feels luxurious it feels nice you don't have to tell your friends that it's a good car they can obviously see it where in the past you had to take them down a real sketchy dirt road in your Subaru to prove a point. You don't have to prove a point with this car. The point has already been made. It's very comfortable, it's spacious, it's luxurious, and yet it still has the off-road capabilities, the all-weather capabilities of your traditional Subaru. So $40,000. I, I brought it up multiple times in this video. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. But I really think that you get a lot of car. I think this is quite on par with the modern Mazda 6. The modern Mazda 6 is pretty luxurious. However, I think that this car is infinitely better than the Mazda 6 in inclement weather. This only comes in all-wheel drive, where the Mazda 6 only comes in front-wheel drive. And Subaru's all-wheel drive system is just unlike any other all-wheel drive system. It is fully symmetrical, meaning it sends 50 to the front, 50 to the back, percentages, that is. Where my Mazda's all-wheel drive system, it's basically mostly front-wheel drive, and it kicks in the back wheels when it needs it, which... It uses it a fair amount, but not all the time like a Subaru. To quote the American philosopher known as Hannah Montana, you get the best of both worlds. That's what you get with the Subaru Legacy Touring. You get the best of both worlds. 
Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Gerald Subaru of Naperville for letting me take out their Subaru Legacy Touring. This is really eye-opening. This is unlike any other Subaru that I've ever driven. This is very, very nice, very luxurious, and I think if you were to purchase one of these, you would be very happy with it, and you can do so from Gerald Subaru of Naperville. Their information is up on the screen, as well as linked in the description below. I've done plenty of reviews for them. Their staff is absolutely awesome. They're really, really great people, which is awesome, especially when you're buying a car. It's such a pain to buy a car, but Gerald Subaru makes it very, very easy. You're in, you're out, and you're greeted with a smile, and that's all you can really ask for. So please go check them out. Supporting them is supporting me, and I appreciate that. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really like it. Take care, guys.